In this video, I'm doing part number four of my A and 8 scratch build video series. This time it's about calibrating the printer and getting our first test print done. So come and join us. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. On this channel, I post videos about 3D printing, gadget reviews and more. And today's video is about the ANET 8 scratch build part number 4. We're going to calibrate the printer and get our first test print done. So the first thing I need to do is really check if all the cables are really plugged in well, if they are in the right sockets. The easiest way to do that is to look at the main board's cable ends and check whether all the cables are in the correct place. If you check um, on the main board here, especially at the motors connectors, every motor connector has a yellow marker with a letter on it. On the main board, we have all the descriptions written down and you just need to make sure that all the cables connected here have the right description. And that makes sure that you didn't connect the wrong motor to the wrong connector. So the next thing I'm going to check is whether my power connectors are really sitting well in their spot so if they are really having a strong connection that looks good and so also i want to check uh, whether my especially the the z axis on um, so the hot end cable is really fixed at, on the top of the printer so it doesn't move around uh, so I, um, I did it with a zip tie and uh, also here the cables at the print bed should be really fixed and plugged in well so one thing I want to point out is that Anit has done a little bit of changes between the first version that I still have and these versions that came out probably last year. So the first thing that I noticed is that they replaced the, yeah, the bearing holders with plastic versions. The first version had metal holders. And the second change, which is, in my opinion, one of the most important changes on this printer that have, they have done, they really improved how they wired the hotbed connector. Because the first version only had yeah, two cables um, for the power, basically one red cable and one black cable. And that was a little bit dangerous in terms of it could overheat and uh, break. And so now they have four cables actually uh, delivering the power, which is much, much better. It has all also been fixed with this hot glue here. So that looks also no, uh, very good. So that is an improvement for safety, which I really appreciate. On my first version, I replaced this connector completely and soldiered four cables to the hotbed to deliver the power. So that was a necessary step. Now they improved, uh, obviously. So the next step is to check your Z-axis switch position. Let's start how we can actually adjust the switch to be in the right spot. The first thing you want to do is really adjust the height of your Z-axis by using these, these vertical lead screws and bring the nozzle down a little bit above the heat bed. So check out my position here. There is a little bit of room between the nozzle and the heat bed. And then take the switch, take the set axis switch and move it up until it clicks basically and then tighten it. So that means when the nozzle is just a little bit above the heat bed, it will trigger the switch and the, the, the nozzle will stop coming down. That's, that's the target position. And from that on, we can bring up the heat bed, bring it close enough to the nozzle tip. So the next step is to level the X axis. So how do we do that? Yeah, what you do is you take a ruler and measure out the distance of one of these sliders. Let's start with the right hand side and we check what the distance is. In my case, it's for example, 5.2 centimeters. And then you go to the left side and then measure out the distance here. And if the distance is not the same, you take the lead screw and then turn it until the distance gets the same as on the other side so you make sure that your prints doesn't get skewed and when the when the printer moves along the x-axis so finally we are getting to the electronics test step which means we will put in the plug into the power and then check if all the motors are moving and if they are connected correctly so let's put in power to the printer
Okay, that looks good. The printer boots and it shows us the temperature. That's one important thing to check. You should make sure that the temperature here that is shown is the room temperature. Both values should be quite equal. If there's anything being shown like weird numbers like a negative value, you should make sure that all the cables connected, for example, the cables that measure the temperature on the hot end and also the cables measuring the temperature on the heat bed are connected correctly. If that is still the case and you still get weird numbers, there might be something broken. Maybe there is a cable broken or your mainboard, there is a resistor broken. That happened to me once. I actually had to replace the mainboard because of such an error. So here everything seems fine. Temperature values seem to be correct. Now let's check basically if the motors are working. So to check the motors, I have to uh, go into the menu and go to quick settings and then hit the right button and then go down to home all and then hit the right button. Yeah, so you heard it, um, all the motors moved and also the calibration and the set axis stop switch, they seem to work. So one thing that's important before we start moving the parts around, before we start adjusting the height is we need to preheat the printer. Why is that? The point is, if we don't preheat the printer, uh, so bringing the print bed up to temperature and also the nozzle, we might get different results when we start printing. So we might be adjusting everything to be perfectly adjusted. And then when we start printing, because of the heat in the nozzle and also the heat in the heat bed, things might extend itself a little bit and also the heat bed might bend itself a little bit. And so we might get different results compared to when the printer ha was in a cold state, like now. So I'm going to preheat everything by going into the printer menu and going to extruder. And then we set the bed temperature up to a value of 50 degrees. And we also set the temperature of the extruder to around about 190 degrees, which is a value that is suitable for PLA. And then we can go back to the overview and watch as the temperature comes up. This is also a good test to see whether everything regarding the electronics and the temperature measurement works. So you should see here that the temperature is coming up slowly. The bed temperature is also raising. That's a good thing. Both temperature sensors seem to work and also the power connectors seem to be good. And we'll wait until this is at the final temperature. Okay, so that uh, looks good. So what we need to do uh, first, before we move anything by hand, go to the menu, hit the middle button, and then go to quick settings, hit the right button, and then go down all the way to the last point, which is disabled stepper, and hit the right button. So what that means is you can now move around all the parts of the printer using your hands um, easily so there's no resistance anymore so let's position the nozzle of the printer in the middle of the heat beds and start calibrating the distance to do that we need a piece of paper any any piece of paper uh, printing paper will do the job we'll put the paper underneath the nozzle so to adjust the height um, basically you go around in circles and unscrew in my case I'm I'm, de I'm releasing the tension of the screws a little bit every time I go around um, so I, I won't go and release one screw to the maximum until I, I touch the nozzle with the with the heat bed because that would skew the um, or that would tilt my hotbed too much I, instead I will go to every screw and then do a little bit of releasing the tension on each corner and then go around in another circle and in between I'm uh, checking whether the paper is still movable or not yeah so I can I can now barely move the paper I actually have to pull on both ends to make it move um, from my point of view that is fine what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move the nozzle to um, each side, each corner and test if there is, is a sort of a tilt, if some edge is 
um, having more connection to the hotbed uh, than the other ones and then I'm going to readjust. Okay, so that looks good now. In all the corners, I, I tend to have the right distance because the resistance of the paper with the nozzle and the hotbed seems to be quite equal. So for this printer, I decided to go for blue color um, for all the parts that I'm printing, especially the extensions and the modifications going to be in this blue. We take the end of the, of the PLA and then we're going to cut off the tip a little bit to make it a little bit more like in a little arrow and then take the spool and put it on a spool holder in my case it's a custom spool holder uh, you can use the one that has been provided with the printer and then take the filament and feed it over the printer's um, yeah, top bar and then what you need to do is you need to shape the filament to be a little bit more straight because when, when it comes off the spool it's it's bending it will make it hard to actually fit it into the the nozzle's tube so the next thing is you need to um, insert the filament here in this hole at the hot end push down this button here and then feed it into this hole and then try to find where the hot ends yeah, tube actually is. Yes. Uh, that's that's not very convenient. So basically, we are now ready to print our first print. Um, I'm not going to use the models that come with the printer because they seem to be crap. So I'm using one that I sliced with Cura, and I'm putting it on the SD card and then start printing. So I now started printing a Benchy. Um, basically, I've uh, sliced this in Cura and put it on the SD card. And let's see if the first layer sticks well. That's the most important thing, obviously. And then we have to wait for the print to finish. So finally, the printer has finished printing this little benchy. I think it's, um, well, it's sort of okay. So if you look at it a little bit closer, you can see that it has a few rough edges here. So um, I think also the, the chimney has come loose. So I, I think I did a little bit of a mistake in the slicer settings. Anyway, we did our first test print. I'm going to work on refining the settings and then Next week we are going to take care about essential upgrades to make the print quality better and to make the handling better. So stay tuned for the new videos. Please like this video if you had fun watching it and also consider subscribing to my channel to be notified when I post my new videos. And hope to see you again next week on this channel for a new video about 3D printing with the Anit A8. Bye bye, have a good week.